Hello, today we're going to be looking at circuits and to do that we're going to need two pieces of equipment, an ammeter and a voltmeter. But before we get started, let's give ourselves a reminder of what they do. So this is our ammeter. Well, an ammeter measures the current in a circuit. And the current is the rate of flow of electric charge. In this case, the electrons flowing around the circuit. So we can think of our ammeter as the piece of equipment that counts the number of electrons that go past it in a certain amount of time. But what about our voltmeter? The voltmeter is connected in parallel, which means it's connected before and after each component. The voltmeter tells us how many joules of energy each coulomb of charge is transferring to the component. It's called the potential difference because it's comparing the before and after and telling us the difference. Right, so let's get on to looking at our circuits. In a series circuit, there's only one way for the current to flow. Whilst in a parallel circuit, there are multiple routes that the current can take. So this is a really simple series circuit. In this video, we're just gonna be looking at series circuits. Okay, so let's take a look at our series circuit. Let's get it fired up. Here we go. So the first thing we're gonna be investigating is the current, we're gonna use our ammeter. So let's get it connected into the circuit. So it's connected in, at the moment we've got a current of 0.18 amps. Let's try moving it somewhere else and see what happens. So we've put it in over here, and again we've got 0.18 amps. So why is that? We can think of a series circuit as one giant loop. The electrons in that loop are forming one single current. Each electron can only be moving as fast as the electron in front of it, and therefore, wherever you place the ammeter in the circuit, it will be measuring the same current and giving you the same value. So if it was 3 amps here, there would be 3 amps here as well. And also here. In a series circuit, the current is the same at any point of the circuit. We can represent this in a shorter way by saying whatever ammeter 1 is will be the same as ammeter 2 and also ammeter 3. So what about the potential difference? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another light bulb. Okay, it's going to investigate the power supply. So, the potential difference across our power supply is around about 2.73 volts. Now let's take one of those components in our circuit. So over this light bulb, the potential difference is around about 1.27 volts. And over our second component, we're looking at about 1.45 volts. So you can quite clearly see that they're not the same as each other, and they're not the same as the power supply. So why is that? In our series circuit, the current is transferring the energy from the power supply to all of the components. If we measure the potential difference of the power supply here, it's 6 volts. Now to transfer that energy to all the components, it has to be shared between them. These components are identical, and so the energy will be transferred equally, with this bulb having a potential difference of 3 volts, and this one also having a potential difference of 3 volts. The potential difference across each component adds up to the potential difference across the power supply. You might be able to see that because of the conservation of energy, that voltmeter 1 will be equal to the sum of all the components. So in this case, voltmeter 1 equals voltmeter 2 plus voltmeter 3. So there we have the rules of current and potential difference in a series circuit. Remember to subscribe, check out our other videos where we're looking at parallel circuits and resistance. And don't forget, check out revisingscience.com, link in the description below, where you'll find worksheets and questions that you can try at home. Thank you for watching. Happy sciencing.